Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physiology Learning. In today's discussion, we are going to discuss the basal ganglia again, but specifically on the motor activity of the basal ganglia. In the previous session, we saw about some of the functions of basal ganglia. Out of that, the major function is motor control. So how does the basal ganglia control the motor system through the thalamus? That is what we are going to discuss today. So we are discussing our CNS lecture, wherein the basal ganglia we are discussing in the basal ganglia, in our previous session, we were discussing the nuclei of basal ganglia and the principal connections of basal ganglia. We also discussed the functions of basal ganglia, but today we are going to discuss one specific function that is the motor function. So coming to the motor function of basal ganglia, the motor function of basal ganglia acts through two pathways, that is the direct pathway and an indirect pathway. So this direct pathway and indirect pathway they have to be kept in a balance in a normal individual. Whenever this goes for a haywire, what will happen is there will be an imbalance and there will be some motor disturbances. So coming to the direct pathway of basal ganglia. In our previous discussion, we saw that the basal ganglia or the striatum has two inputs. That is one from the cortex, another one from the thalamus. And from the striatum, there is various outputs to the internal connections of basal ganglia. One of the chief important output is Basal ganglia gives its impulse to the globus pallidus externus also as well as the globus pallidus internus. And all of us know that among the two outputs of basal ganglia, this globus pallidus internus is one of the output which goes to the thalamus. So thalamus can be directly influenced by the globus pallidus internal segment. So what is its action? It has inhibitory action on the thalamus. So we should know that globus pallidus internus has an immediate action on the thalamus. So now let's try to understand what happens at rest and what happens during movement. Whenever the person is at rest, so taking the first condition, whenever the person is at rest, the striatum will have very minimal activity. So let's see if the striatum is having minimal activity, the striatum usually produces GABA to inhibit globus pallidus internus. But the striatal baseline activity is very, very less. So what will happen? This globus pallidus internus is not inhibited. So what will happen? Globus pallidus internus is in turn going to inhibit the thalamus because its action is to produce GABA. So what will happen? At rest, the person GPI, that is the globus pallidus internal, keeps the thalamus inhibited. So now let's see what happens during a movement. So whenever the person is doing any movement, the influences from the cortex as well as from the thalamus, both of them are going to charge the striatum. So what is going to happen? The striatum is going to get charged completely. Both of them are giving influences to the striatum. So as and when the striatum gets in more influences, it is going to strongly inhibit the globus pallidus internus. So when globus pallidus internus itself is inhibited, do you think it can inhibit the thalamus? The answer is no. So what will happen to the thalamus? the thalamus is not inhibited by the globus pallidus internus now. This is also called as disinhibition of thalamus. So whenever disinhibition of thalamus happens, what will happen is this is going to enhance the movements. So disinhibition of thalamus is going to enhance the movements. So if any pathway is able to act the direct pathway, then it is going to stimulate the movement. Just remember the simple point, direct pathway is going to stimulate the movement, that is increase the movement. Now coming to the indirect pathway. What happens in indirect pathway? We, we have seen that the striatum not only goes to the globus pallidus internus, it also goes to the globus pallidus externus also. And globus pallidus externus has one more connection, which is nothing but the subthalamic nucleus. And all of us should know that subthalamic nucleus is the only stimulatory part or only producing the glutamate in the entire interconnections of basal ganglia. So this subthalamic nucleus, what it can do is it can stimulate the globus pallidus internus. Now let's try to understand what will happen to this pathway whenever the person is having movement. So whenever the person is having movement, the striatum is going to be charged again. The striatum is going to be charged and this in turn is going to inhibit the globus pallidus externus. So whenever globus pallidus externus itself is inhibited, do you think it can inhibit the subthalamic nucleus? The answer is no. So this pathway is not active now. So subthalamic nucleus become active now. So as and when the subthalamic nucleus becomes active, it will give impulses to the globus pallidus internus. And we know that globus pallidus internus is going to inhibit the thalamus. 
So this indirect pathway, whenever it is activated, it is going to inhibit the thalamus and decrease the movements. So that's why when we are going to study about the disease of the basal ganglia also, some group of diseases will have hyperkinetic movements and some group of diseases might have hypokinetic movements. And even in the same disease, the person will be producing hyperkinetic movements as well as hypokinetic movement. And why does this happen is because of the imbalance between the direct and indirect pathway. Direct pathway, just remember whenever it is enhanced, it is going to enhance the movement via thalamus. And indirect pathway is going to inhibit the movements from the thalamus. So this is all about the direct and indirect pathway. And there is one more person who is keeping this basal ganglia mechanisms in overall motor control. That place is called as Substantia Niagara Pass Compacta. I told you this Substantia Niagara Pass Compacta is the one which is affected in Parkinson's disease. So let's see. This Substantia Niagara Pass Compacta through its nigrostriatal pathway, that is it is going to the striatum and usually in a normal individual, it is going to excite the D1 pathway, that is the direct pathway is also called as D1 pathway and it is going to inhibit the indirect pathway. If Substantia Niagara is not functional, what will happen is the D1 pathway will get inhibited and D2 pathway can get excited. So when we read about Parkinson's disease, again I am going to stress on the fact in Parkinson's disease, the Substantia Niagara Pars Compacta is affected which lead to D1 pathway inhibition and D2 pathway excitation. So this will lead to various different movement disorders which we are going to study in the disorders of basal ganglia. I hope it's clear. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Thank you so much.